We're gearing up for free agency frenzy. Here are some of the big names that could be on the free agent market. Pro Bowlers, they're Super Bowl champions. Uh, hey, Shaq Barrett, I see you. So, of all these guys who may be available, who's the most fascinating free agent right now, Kyle? I'm going to go with Kenny Galladay. And, yes, we're starting the hour with a Detroit Lions Let's wide go. receiver. Here's why. Um, this guy, if you look at the lists, and whether it's our list, that Rosenthal does, or all those, he's, like, way up there on these top free agent lists. Like, really high. What do we know about Kenny Galladay? Someone's about to write a huge check for him, all right? We know he had a huge season in 2019. We know uh, he has incredible highlights that we're seeing here, and we know his last name rhymes with Holiday, and it comes up a lot on this show, mostly that part of the table I'm putting to Nate. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, I'm intrigued by it because I think it's kind of scary, meaning he's really talented, but, like, what do we know? He played five games last year. I don't think he's ever been in a huge game in his life, respectfully. Like, he played at Northern Illinois. He's been on the Lions. This is not a guy who you know a third and 12 in the divisional round. Like, he's going to be at the sticks. You don't know. So it's one of these things where you go with the talent and you go with what the teammates say about him. And some teammates going to go, some, some team is going to go huge. Like, Allen Robinson, if he didn't get tagged, like, Allen Robinson can play. Mm -hmm. And he's played with poor quarterbacks. He's 100%. played in different markets. Like, we, he's a dog. We know. I love Allen Robinson. We all do. Kenny Galladay has this enigma about him where we see him in the highlights and we like the talent, but for some team to say, Kenny Galladay, here's $16 million a year or wow. 15 or 17, it's like, man, that's a big bust, the potential. But it's also like, you know, maybe I got the next superstar on the way up and it's an investment in the future. So I don't know where he's going. I know some teams need wideouts. They're pretty intriguing. But Galladay, who knew? Way up there in, on the list and way up here on our show. There's tons of depth at wide receiver and free agency, right? That's the thing that really sticks out. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's go back to Galladay for a second. Okay. Let's do the dating analogy. We always do dating analogies here. Mm -hmm. okay. Lions we seemingly do. don't have a ton of talent on that roster. Galladay is a young, up-and-coming star. The Lions decide to let him hit free agency. If you're in the dating world and you see this f person that you might have interest in, but you see that their last person just broke up with them despite – no real reason. Why. Wouldn't that give you a bit of hesitation before trying to ink that deal? Like, why wouldn't the Lions want him? He's already on the team. Or you might think that the person that broke up with them has the issues. Yeah, and that, I like, think and maybe the they Lions were unhealthy and they want it it's out. Not of the Lions so. lend yeah, themselves to that narrative that. of like, do the like, do Lions their decision making, their records the past couple of years was it them or was it him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a Galladay guy. What do you think? Well, let the records show that. Um, Kyle has said Galladay in way more than I have on the show. True. We're all big fans of Kenny Galladay. Yeah. Um, I have said no, that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you too. I, I do believe that um, he will be the most highly sought after. And it's because of the youth. And there's also this um, space uh, where the potential is there. And that's what we're talking about. There might be a question mark and some mystery there, but teams get excited about mystery. Not that Allen... Robinson hasn't shown us that. I don't want mystery. I'm not saying I'm not giving 18 million dollars to mystery. I hear what you're and, saying. And if Trace. there's injury issues, like I hear what you're saying, Trace. It's an open a prayer for but sure. The, but the way that free agent works, free agency works, is that sometimes mystery is worth it. And I feel like in this case, knowing him, six three, six four, big frame, he can play outside, inside. And he's so physical at the point of attack. There's not many receivers like him. Junior, and he's a true junior, number one. You can yeah. have 97 yeah. catches. I've talked to head coaches in the league. He's a true number one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What do you think, okay. Shanks? Juju, where you know it's coming, 100 catches? Yeah, the wide receiver group is so interesting because you have a Juju who has put 97 catches, stays healthy, always is out there. You've got a proven guy like a T.Y. Hilton who's at the latter stage of his career. Like, <clears throat> I don't know what it's going to I know the Lions wanted to get him to a long-term deal, and I know we're talking a lot about Kenny mm. Galladay, but he is viewed as a number one wide receiver, and the fact that one of the worst teams in football is saying – we're good without We're good, him. Yeah. It makes me wonder what his market value really mm. is. Expensive wide receiver. I, yeah, I on don't, a team I that don't love that phrase. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Sorry, Nate. All right, I'm going to go to a guy that <laughs> there is no real doubts about who just couldn't get paid because of the economics this time around and still might buy his team, Shaq Barrett. It's okay. fascinating. Pass rusher. 100%. No. Pass rusher. This is, they, don't, they don't show up often. They're elite pass rushers. He's one of them. He's proven it. And if you were to say, okay, well, 2019 was – a one-year thing, he was a flash in the pan, he was a one-hit wonder. Let's franchise tag him, see what he does. Their biggest game was the NFC Championship game. He had three sacks, he was terrorizing Aaron Rodgers, he was all over the field. He was dominant in the playoffs. So the Buccaneers couldn't franchise both he and Chris Godwin, so they franchised Godwin, who's coming back for one year. Basically saying to Barrett and Levante David, you guys forgot. Then the Buccaneers somehow find a way to sign Levante David before he hits the free agency mm -hmm. market. 
I'm fascinated. If the Bucks can somehow, some way, lock up an extension with Shaq Barrett before he hits free agency, it's a master class on how you keep a team together, and I want to know exactly how they do it, because looking at that list of free agents, you're like, all right, they're going to have to give up two out of the three. Well, they already know they're getting back Godwin and Levante David. If they can somehow get Shaq Barrett back, I, I, I'd be amazed. What's Jason Light doing right now as we're speaking? I think he's probably trying to figure out a way to convince Shaq Barrett to take a little bit less than what he might get on the open market. Mm. And you have to prey on the fact that we were the ones who took a risk, not took a risk, but we were the ones to first give you that big contract after Denver let you walk out of there. We're the ones where you got those sack numbers. We're the ones that made you a Super Bowl champion, and we love you. Uh, they yeah. love Shaq Barrett in Tampa. Does Shaq Barrett want to come back for maybe less than he can make on the open market? 28 years old, elite pass rusher in this league. It's not, list, it's not a list of Hall of Fame candidates. This is the kind of guy that you look at, you're like, all right, I know my team can use Shaq yeah. Barrett. I don't know with a Kenny Galladay or a Juju if that guy is going to get better on his next team. Shaq Barrett, at least he's proven it over the last mm -hmm. couple of years. No mm. doubt about it. I'm going to go to the guy that we've forgotten about. And a lot of it has been because he hasn't played. That's A.J. Green. I know you're saying, Nate, come on, don't hit me with the stuff from 10 years ago. Well, 10 years ago, <laughs> he went on this run. Seven straight Pro Bowls. He was fantastic. I know over the last few years, he hasn't been on the field much. I believe in three seasons, he's only had eight touchdowns. And you're, and you're thinking to yourself, well, Nate, and why would any team in the world sign A.J. Green? Because I feel like he's healthy. I feel like he opted out almost uh, uh, some of these games where he could have played. And he said, you know what? My time is almost up here, so I'm going to heal up as much as I can. So when I am indeed a free agent, I can go somewhere and be healthy. You know what a place intrigues me? And I know this is the age old signing, but the Patriots picking up another veteran player at the mm -hmm. end of his career mm -hmm. and has something to prove. Mm -hmm. They need a veteran voice on offense. I know they have Julian Edelman, but Julian Edelman, he's a smaller slot guy. You bring in a guy like A.J. Green, um, he's going to want to bust his butt. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what they have at the quarterback position, A.J. is a guy that's been through it. So he can be as steady as Eddie. Um, and another thing, I feel like they just need to take a swing. I, I would rather the Patriots be in this world of we tried than what ifs. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the season, they're thinking, well, we had a chance to get AJ Green for a cheap price. He he would have came in and helped us, but we didn't. You we think didn't AJ, take a swing. I don't know if I think AJ is AJ Green a swing. Is he like a let's risk it all for him? Depends on the price. Yeah. I think he's inexpensive. That's yeah. the point I'm trying to make. I don't think I don't AJ's right, going so anywhere to break really, the bank. So the high so they're not really high risk there, right? No, not at all. You yeah. bring in AJ Green, he's he's not he's not gonna cost you a ton of money, and he's a veteran player, yeah. and a veteran voice in that locker room, mm -hmm. which they need. Mm -hmm. The wide receiver group is really interesting. You've got a guy like Curtis Samuel who never did it at that number one level but showed flashes, and then For you've sure. got guys like T.Y. Hilton and A.J. Green yeah. and Golden Tate, who's a free agent, who are like, I know what I'm getting there. It's just that their best years are likely behind them. I, I don't think, think it's insulting to them. I think it's what you're talking about. Whenever a pass rusher hits the market, that to me is always a big deal. It's rare. It's always like interesting. Everybody needs them. There's few elite ones. Why, I'm so disappointed that the Steelers are so strapped for cash that they could not tag Bud Dupree. 19 and a half sacks, that's top 10 in the league over the past two years. They were 11-0 with him, 1-5 without him. I think he makes a great impact. And if he goes somewhere, I just want him to go somewhere and get paid. I think he's a great player. Interesting arc in the NFL, Shrake. I'd love to see him with the Colts. By Adifo, I would love to see him with the Browns working alongside my, the likes of Miles Garrett. I think he could definitely make noise in the NFL. Yeah, the pass rushers are he, it's Yannick Ngakwe, it's yes. Shaq Barrett. I don't know where you put Bud Dupree. He's got to be towards the top, like you're saying. The ankle injury would concern me. Late in the season. I'll see. Is it ankle or ACL? ACL. Uh, ACL. I would... I would be, un I'd be, I'd wonder if that would affect his market value, but there definitely will be suitors. I hear value. I hear value if oh. everything's coming along well and he got hurt late in the season. He might change uh, a defense for someone or at least add to it. A